The secret life of insects is as wild and dark as it gets. From hornets and bees, to beetles and ladybugs, the things we have to contend with pale in comparison to their day to day. And as we head into the cold months, these bugs prep in some supreme ways. Brace yourself, winter is coming. What bug can fly and swim? The great diving beetle. He hangs out in the water, but must head to the surface for air. He captures oxygen under his wings, like a scuba diver, allowing him to stay submerged for long stretches. But what do they spend their time doing under there? Ambushing fish as big as them. They need to stock up on calories for the brutal winter ahead. Bet you didn't see that coming. Okay, moving on, let's follow this horde of hornets. They're hungry for apples. All that sugar will fuel the colony during the hard months ahead. This guardian hornet at the entrance keeps an eye on who's coming and going. After all, this operation does call for protection. You do have the queen of the kingdom laying eggs in each cell. Then there's about 700 workers working non-stop around the clock, feeding the larvae. The crazy part is none of these workers will survive the winter. But the work they do now for all the little larvae you're seeing sets up the future of their colony. Weeks later though, as the weather grows colder, so too does the nature of the hornets. For you see, this nest isn't designed to stockpile supplies or excess cargo, like these growing larvae. With no need for more workers, they dispose of them, throwing the larvae out of the nest and leaving them to die on the chilled ground outside. They give the ice treatment to their queen, too. She starved out of her own kingdom, dead after only a year. A few very lucky larvae remain, cast as next season's queens, if they only knew. Okay, so how about a slight change of scenery? Let's focus on the buzzing of these bees for a sec. The plan for their members is to actually survive the biting winter. Worker bees with yellow pollen sticking to their back legs return to the hive to unload the goodies collected. But the whole squad mentality has its shortcomings in practice. See this dude? He's a male bee, called a drone. During mating season, the drones had one job to do, mate with the queen. But now that the deed's been done, and since drones are unable to feed themselves, well, there's just no longer need for them. And so the guards, those bees dragging the drones out of the joint, the guards give them the old heave-ho. Starved and exiled, left to die. The horrors of honey. The culture can bring you to your knees, but it also supports the survival of the 60,000 bees who live at the hive. The queen bee can live up to five years, but her workers only last about six tireless summer weeks, all to brace for the cold snap ahead. And these larvae? Aw, they're actually pretty cute, aren't they? Are tucked away nice and snug as they develop into what are called winter bees, which can live up to six months to ensure the hive makes it out of winter alive. Shall we go to a prettier place? Ladybugs should do the trick. They too are prepping for the big chill, but aren't the nesting type really. Rather than build shelter, they seek it out. They follow aggregation pheromones to these nooks and crannies. Communing together, often in the hundreds, helps reduce dehydration. Ladybugs are amazing creatures, with pretty cool powers. Like the ability to produce a type of antifreeze, allowing them to survive temperatures as low as 14 degrees Fahrenheit. When they're nice and situated, they cease eating and essentially transition into suspended animation, sitting frozen in time until the spring turns its head. It's not just a movie plot device. To some bugs, it's just called real life. Oh boy, on this strange spinning rock, things just keep getting weirder and weirder and weirder. 
Among arthropods, breeding can sometimes be slow and sultry, other times fierce, frantic, and dangerous. The millipede seduction begins with a massage. With hundreds of legs, it's a full-bodied affair. These millipedes have six-inch long bodies, but their sex organs are right at the front end, just seven segments behind the head. All this caressing is to persuade the female to turn and face him. When she does, he passes a packet of sperm over to her. Millipede mating is a sedate, leisurely affair, often lasting several hours. For a male scarab beetle, it's a crowded scrum. This male on the right has found a female and clambers on her back. But he has a rival who uses his shovel-shaped head to try and pry him off her. But they're so busy fighting, the female's had enough and wanders off. A male scorpion has more to fear from a female than rejection. He grabs her and probes with his sting, confirming she's a female. But this potential mate could easily kill him, so he must grapple with her powerful claws to hold her at arm's length and keep his distance from her lethal stinger. Claws locked together, he leads her in a pirouette across the sand. This courtship dance signals his intentions and allows the male to search for a patch of solid ground on which to drop his packet of sperm. Here will do nicely. Hidden beneath his body, the sperm packet is smaller than a grain of rice. Having deposited it, he pulls the female around so she's directly over it. And she picks it up through a tiny opening at the base of her legs. Job done. A female mantis lacks the scorpion stinger, but she too is a deadly predator. And she's just as happy to eat her partner. This male must approach her very carefully, so he doesn't become her next meal. Her abrupt warning display signals she's not in the right mood. If he doesn't back off, she'll kill him. Time to look elsewhere. This female might be a bit more amenable. As he inches closer, he releases a chemical signal to announce that he's a mate, not lunch. But the final approach is still a leap of faith. Lucky for him, she seems receptive. She holds still while he gets down to business. This female Honduran curly hair tarantula with a leg span of nearly six inches is just as deadly. She spins a mat of silk, trip wires that detect any prey that ventures close to her lair. And she could easily kill this smaller male. 
But it's a risk he must take if he wants to sire the next generation. After nightfall, male tarantulas wander long distances in search of these femme fatale. Receptors in his legs tell him he's stumbled on the female's silken mat. And he quickly taps out a code on the silk to tell her he's come courting. But this is no romantic encounter. He must use his front legs to hold her half-inch deadly fangs at bay. While holding her aloft, he uses one of his palps to insert a sperm package into the female. Then he beats a hasty retreat, just in case she changes her mind. For many male arthropods, the mating game is a dangerous one. Yet the stakes couldn't be higher. <laughs> 